If you decided to click on this video, I think you already know how this is going to pan out and you're already prepared for that. Um, today I will be talking about 30 songs from the country of Sweden. Uh, and I will probably be way too biased for my own good and for your own good as well. I guess we'll find out how bad <laughs> of my how bad my bias actually is. But yeah, seven categories, 30 songs. It's gonna be a long one. I'll get right into it. And I will start off by being the most, you know, positive and optimistic about anything ever here. Because the song Eloise by Arvignana is uh, just an all-time classic and among the greatest songs to have been in Eurovision. Um, it's okay to click off the video, you know. Um, but yeah, this is... Um, I, th I mean, it's such a beloved song in Sweden, everyone knows it, and uh, for good reason, because this is a quality piece of songwriting. Uh, the hook is infectious, really has this melody that sticks to the ear instantly, and you can find yourself humming along to it at any time. Um, the progression of the song is kind of my favorite part of it, because the verses are a bit on the uh, restrained side, a bit suspenseful, but also really packed with a lot of energy and the rhythm. Uh, really works well with the instrumentation as well, and it leads into the chorus in such a flawless like ladder uh, of chords leading into it. Uh, and then the chorus is just this kind of explosive shouting sing-along um, anthem with the melody and with the backing track that really backs it up. The backing vocals offer a l another lovely layer to everything that goes on here. It's just flawless. I mean, the, the choreography that they perform on stage and everything, I mean, you can see it as tacky today, but uh, I think it adds so much to the charm because this is a very harmless piece of music. Uh, it's just there to entertain, be a catchy sing-along friendly tune, and it's just perfect for that specific purpose. I think it's such a well-written song. The chord intervals are great. The melody flows so well on top of it. Uh, it's been crafted very carefully, and you can kind of hear that when you when you listen closely, and it's... Flawless, among the greatest for me. Um, hopefully, um, or well, hopefully, but I, I'll try and restrain myself in placing songs at the top category, but this is honestly uh, one of my absolute, absolute favorite songs that Sweden have sent to Eurovision. Um, in 1994, we have a song called Stjärnorna. Uh It's a ballad, quite a slow-moving one, but also has a pretty melody to it. It's sung very well, performed well, I think it's a solid effort altogether. Um, not really anything outstanding about it, in all honesty, more than maybe the vocal performances and how they work together. It's a solid hook. It's a solid structure throughout the song, but it doesn't really leave that grand impression on me as a listener and maybe not as on you either. Um, it's just kind of all right. It's a nice song, but it doesn't really stand out all too much. Uh, but it's a pretty ballad, and it's well sung, so solid effort. 1995 is more than solid, Sepome by Jon Johansson. Beautiful chorus, lovely melody, um, nice instrumental tone to it. I like the uh, like the whole instrumentation of it. There's a nice arrangement in here. Um, sounds very typical for its time, which is a charming factor, I think. Uh, the vocal performance is fantastic, the backing vocals add a layer. Structure is very strong, um, yeah, just well-written song and very well-performed, fantastic. Love it to bits, kind of like a perfect soft ballad in, in many aspects, in my opinion. Um, and Den Vilda by One More Time is also fantastic, just kind of this magical songwriting piece. Um, the instrumental really carries a big, big baggage here um, to really create the whole atmosphere of the song. The vocals are kind of whispery and very intimate, and that really works for the tone of the song. Uh, has a nice flow in the chorus, I like the melody. Verses are a bit on the underwhelming side in comparison, but it's still just an overall package of, of a very pleasant listening experience, and also quite nicely staged. Um, liking the, the when the whole like song kind of picks up towards the end, when the piano I guess you could call it a solo, like the instrumental part takes over. It's a very seamless transition that works really well, and it's a nice piano arrangement altogether throughout the song. Really lovely, very fantastic. Um, now I think I've... Um, this is a very strong period for Sweden in Eurovision, in my opinion. 
things are going a bit downhill from now on, I think. Because in 1997, Bara Honelskame by Blonde, it's sing-along friendly, it's upbeat, it's happy, it's catchy, uh, but it doesn't really interest me all too much. I think uh, I'll put it in solid because it, it's, I, I think it's very inoffensive. Uh, I don't really have any any complaints about it. It's just that I don't think it's all too uh, over or like all too interesting either. It's a catchy hook. Uh, there's like some attempt to make a, a memorable choreography. Uh, they perform it well, but it's it's just not something that stands out among the crowd, I think. Uh, and there's a bit of a blip in this strong period for Sweden in Eurovision. 1998, Charlie Kenner by Jonsson. Very pretty ballad, well sung, nicely staged, well performed. Uh, quite well written, but also a bit on the underwhelming side, I think. It doesn't really have that impact that maybe it needs to have. It's a very restrained ballad and very mellow which works for its own beauty, but I think that when you maybe don't connect with uh, either the lyrical content or you don't connect with the overall melody or impact that the song actually carries, then you, you kind of lose that intimacy that the song tries to really establish with you. Um, I mean, the lyrics are very pretty. I'm not saying they're, they're not. It's just that maybe for an uh, audience... Um, outside of Sweden, it might not be the most easy song to connect to uh, because of the lyric uh, being in Swedish. Um, of course, that's not an issue, for, like that's not the problem of, of the song, but I think that a song that kind of relies on the lyrical content like this one does, I think uh, kind of loses out a little bit on that. Um, I think I ramble on too much about that point. I think the song is quite fine. It's really great, well written. Uh, for me, I get attached to it quite easily. Um, I think it's very pretty. It's also well performed. Yeah, just great. 1999 is also really great. I don't really consider this to be winner worthy of the whole Eurovision, but it's upbeat, it's catchy, memorable, fun time, um, well sung. The song has a nice structure as well. I think the segments flow into each other very, very nicely. Uh, it's kind of one of these where the intro just hits you right from the get-go and keeps the energy pumping uh, right from the start which is nice, uh, and it doesn't really die down at any point. It's a constant uh, flow of energy that really keeps the song moving, and the different segments kind of take over very um, in a very well-flowing manner, I guess. Um, so structure-wise, I think this is very strong. It's a good performance. Catchy hook. Yeah, really great. 2000, When the Spirits Are Calling My Name, it's fantastic. Just love the whole uh, authentic authenticity of this song. It feels very tribal. It's very, um, as I said, authentic. Uh, really just has that powerful drive in it and really sets its own world apart from, from all of the other songs competing. This is the one that stands out. Um, it's very culturally um, telling. Um, with also like the stage layout and everything, how they've staged the song uh, and how well it goes along with this kind of powerful anthem. It's just such a hard-hitting chorus, memorable. The verses are very strong, especially with like the instrumental that backs it up. It's a very nice uh, guitar-driven as well as just the whole kind of orchestration that really backs up the song. It's very uh, dynamic and varied and really just creates a very expansive uh, surrounding for a very powerful vocal performance, should not be overlooked as well. Very, very good one. I think it's fantastic. Uh, Listen to Your Heartbeat, I don't really think is equally fantastic. I mean, this finished in fifth place, and I'm not really sure why. Um, I mean, it's upbeat, it's catchy, it's happy, I get dragged into it. Um, maybe not really my type of music all the way there, and I think it's a bit on the standard side. It doesn't really do anything super interesting to me. It's well performed. It's a catchy pop tune with a with an with a hook that's really strong, but I think it's just solid. In all honesty, it doesn't interest me way too much. And once it's over, I don't really need to hear it again. Um, but that's just me. Two thousand two, I think, is kind of the same thing. Never let it go. I've never really got into this one. Uh, to be honest, I think I might actually put it down here because I I do like the choreography and everything, and the energy is quite infectious they really get me going as well but i think the song is actually really really um quite not good 
Uh, I think the hook is very monotonous and repetitive. Um, the verses are very draggy in a way, like they, they kill the beat a lot. And then th there's like abrupt changes into the chorus that goes back with just several hits. And it kind of feels a bit choppy. And I don't really feel a cohesion to this song. And it's such a shame because I think there were much better uh, songs available for Sweden to send in, in the year 2002. Um, this one was the one that ended up participating and I've never really kind of connected with it. It's a shame, but that's that's just what it is for me. I uh, still like the infectious energy and, and the performance of it, but uh, the song isn't really there for me. 2003, Gimme Your Love, um, really great one, great duet, great pop song. It's very... Um, what do you call it? Very in the moment, I guess. Um, everything feels very... I wouldn't say authentic about it because that's really the wrong word because it, it's obviously such a like pop product, but I think it's well professionally performed to kind of make it have the impact of the fact that it's actually real. Um, I guess that's what I'm kind of leaning towards. Uh, I think the chorus is memorable. I think the backing track is actually quite uh, very pretty. Uh, I think the instrumental has something in it uh, what, from the backing vocals to how just this beat drum, like the constant kick drum really bumps up the energy in the song while also kind of uh, relying on this more mellow tone in the, in the instrumental as well. Uh, I think the verses are very strong uh, when they sing their solo parts and it all kind of just ties together really nicely to the chorus. I think it's a well-structured song, well thought out, just really a great a great pop song uh, from the early 2000s. Uh, then we have It Hurts. I never really clicked with this one, uh, I gotta say. I think it's a solid one. Like, the performance is not really my thing, uh, even though it's a charismatic performance. Uh, but the song, I think it's a bit too on the repetitive side. I mean, it's energetic, it's sing-along friendly. Uh, this is a big hit in Sweden, and a lot of people really love it. Maybe just not for me. Um, I th I still think it's a solid song. I mean, it's a it's a solid pop tune with a, with a great structure. I just don't really get invested into the hook. Uh, and I think the performance kind of elevates the song. Uh, or not the performance, but the performer, I guess you should say. Uh, she's very charismatic and a very great professional on stage with the way she's also singing at the same time. Um, but I think the song kind of is is a bit middle of the road, in all honesty, with the with the chorus mainly. I think it's quite uh, quite monotonous, um, even though it's like a classic here in Sweden. Uh, something that is not a classic in Sweden is Las Vegas. Um, this just kind of no one still to this day understands why it won in Sweden. Um, um, it's an ambitious performance. Uh, it's not a bad song, I don't think. It's just that it kind of... I don't really see the point of it. It's just a pop song with a kind of like... I like the suspenseful tone and the, like, the suggestive mood of the atmosphere that it has. Uh, vocal performance is quite good. Staging layout is alright. Um, it's just that the song doesn't really have enough of a great melody to it. It doesn't really have enough variation throughout for me to enjoy it. And I don't really connect with with much of the song. I don't really see the purpose of it. I think it's uh, it has a cool tone to it, but that's kind of where it ends, uh, in my opinion. So yeah, 2006 I think is much better. Invincible, um, I think the Swedish version is better, but this is still really great. It might even be... No, it's really great for me. Uh, Carola is absolutely incredible on stage. What a brilliant vocalist. Uh, and the song is kind of like perfectly written pop song in all honesty. I love the way it progresses actually. I'm gonna move it up. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. Uh, <laughs> it's a real standout in the catalog here, I think. Uh, I don't really seek out to listen to this song so much, but it's like the perfect schlager really with an incredible vocal performance. So I just, I just have to put it up here. Uh, that's gonna be it. Um, 2007, The Worrying Kind, not really uh, anything that I'm all too crazy about. The Ark is a very famous band in Sweden, uh, and I think that kind of played a kind of a big part in why they won. Uh, the song is catchy. It has like this kind of 
it's it's it has its own identity. There's nothing that really sounds like it, at least in in Melody Festival or in Eurovision. I think uh, it's this kind of throwback rock type of thing with still like a very upbeat groove to it. Uh, it's kind of a nice style, uh, and I like the fact that it stands out. Performance is great. Um, it's just not really a song that kind of works for me, though. Uh, I don't really get heavily invested into it. I don't think it's particularly um, exciting. It has a catchy hook, and this flow is all right, but um, yeah, I don't really get invested into it all too much. So I'll put it down here. Uh, and again, we had better songs to send this year as well, believe me. Um, Hero. Um, I remember back in 2008, this was predicted to win Eurovision like by quite a margin. Uh, and then it just simply didn't. And it was very far away from it. I think it's a very professional performance. It looks great. It sounds great. Very good pop song altogether. I don't really know why it didn't work, but uh, I think it's really great. Um, I would. I never really considered it to be that great, the fact that it should have won. Uh, I think there are many, many, many better songs in 2008. Uh, but it's just a really great pop song, in my opinion. I really like it. Uh, I like the structure of it. I think there's, like, the suggestive tone in the verses really work, and then the chorus has that kind of typical schlager melody that just really uh, sticks, to m sticks to my head. Um, and I think the, the performance is very professional. I like it a lot, actually. Um, La Voix is not really, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, La Voix is, it's unique. Uh, that's absolutely something that it has going for it. But I was never really crazy about this one. It's a good vocal performance. It's a nice stage layout. I really like the, the concept with like the masks and everything in the, in the back, uh, on the backing vocalists and everything. But the song just doesn't really work for me. I think the verses are really uh, not my thing at all. Um, they're very, what do you say, monotonous in a very low register, not very interesting. And then the chorus is a complete uh, switch, like the, the opposite contrast with this just piercing vocal performance and a backing track that tries to be very grand and it's kind of like angelic in a sense. Um, and it, it just doesn't really work for me. Um, I think I'll go as far and to say that it's just not for me. This might actually be my least favorite song that uh, Sweden have sent to Eurovision. At least from 1993 and forward, I would say that. Uh, 2010, it's an I like it, but I think there's something sweet in This Is My Life, but it's just not a song that we should have sent, in my opinion. It's too uninteresting and it's too kind of minimalistic and doesn't really have anything about it that is supposed to grab an audience in any way. Uh, it's very mellow. Uh, it's kind of middle of the road. It's just a pleasant listening experience in the back, but it doesn't have anything to really leave an imprint on on, on an audience or anything. Uh, at least I think so. Um, it's kind of unfortunate. I think that uh, Anna Bergendahl has come back with many, many fantastic songs now um, in the years of late. This is just not my type of uh, Anna Berendahl music that I kind of liked. It's very singer-songwriter singer in a very minimalistic tone, uh, very simplistic. Yeah, not my thing. Not my thing. Uh, 2011, popular. Um, lyrics aside, because they're terrible, um, this has such a driving beat to it <laughs> that I actually really get uh, invested into what goes on in the song. Uh, the chorus is memorable. Uh, I think the performance is absolutely the main standout. I mean, it's so well staged, well choreographed. The lighting is great. The whole gimmick with the with the glass shattering, it's nice. Um, really great. Yeah, it's not really a, a lyrical masterpiece. It's not really a musical masterpiece either. Like melodically, it's not too interesting. But you know, production wise, it's very strong. Uh, I like the energy of it a lot. It's a very infectious song. Really great. I think that's where I would land it. Uh, I told you that I wouldn't really put that many songs in Among the Greatest, but I think that Euphoria just has to be up there. I mean, Euphoria is the perfect pop song to me. Still in 2022, I think it sounds like the perfect pop song. It, You know, it's kind of... Um, it's very clear that it's not made in 2022 because it has this, you know, house-esque type of backing track. 
but I kind of love that type of music, you know. So, uh, and this one is just so effectively put together. I think the um, the whole like backing track of this song is incredible, honestly. Uh, the the beat is very driving, um, and also uh, the verses are so like what do you call it? Like suspenseful. They're mysterious. They're really dark and gritty uh, with just synth work, uh, and it builds incredibly well with these staccato chords. Just flowing in from very uh, warm, uh, like a warm sound to just becoming more and more assertive and driving in the song. And then you have the vocal performance, which is insane. The vocal melody is phenomenal in the chorus. It's just one of these hooks that I will never get out of my head uh, and I don't want to get it out of my head because it's so great. Uh, the performance is incredible. Love every second of it. It's just one of these performances I can't stop looking at. You just have to be in the moment when this when this starts. Um, it's a, it's an attention grabber for three minutes, and I can never look away or uh, I could never pause this song. I think that's that's a very strong point as well. You can't pause this song and just ah I'll finish listening to it later. No no no. You have to listen to all of it. Um, twenty thirteen you. It's a, I think this is also a really great one, to be honest. Uh, has a great hook, great vocal performance. I like the instrumental of it. Maybe not too remarkable in any sense, but I think everything about it is just really great. It's well polished. It has a beautiful vocal performance. It has a very nice staging as well. I like the whole concept of the backing dancers um, surrounding him. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a well put together package. Um, really great. And I think uh, Undo is also really great. Um, a power ballad uh, with a, I don't really get what the whole Undo My Sad is all about, but um, melodically it's quite strong. I think instrumentally is where it really stands out. Uh, it's like the minimalistic approach from the verses and then the explosiveness of the chorus. The contrast there, it really works for a song like this that has kind of relied so much on its intimacy. Uh, vocal performance is strong, staging is beautiful. Yeah, just a very well put together package again. Uh, 2015 Heroes, fantastic. Love the stage performance of this a lot. Uh, absolutely stands out and leaves an impression. Like, like, like leaves an... Um, yeah, I think you say impression, right? Um, great pop song. It's like this house-inspired um, combined with a bit of country-esque verses. Uh, just a great hook. Uh, I like the verses of it a lot. They really set the tone very nicely and I think the vocal performance is very charismatic and characteristic. Characteristic is the better word there. Um, I think it just stands out from, from other songs. You can just look at it like, oh, it's a normal pop song. But the thing about it is that I think it's like a perfect pop song. It, there aren't really any setbacks about it. The production quality is fantastic. Uh, the song flows incredibly well between segments. It's well sung, uh, has a killer hook. Everything just works here, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, fantastic. Uh, 2016, I don't think this is fantastic whatsoever. I actually think... Oh, if I were sorry. No, I don't get this one. Um, it's way too... Like, what do you call it? We have an expression in Swedish that's called melamjölk, which is basically just in the middle. It's basically just... A bunch of nothingness. I don't think it's very interesting at all. It has like a, a nice chill calm mood to the song but I just kind of get bored by that. Unfortunately it's just not a song for me. Uh, it never has been uh, and it kind of uh, infuriates me even more that fact that we had a song called Human which I think was incredible. Uh, we definitely should have sent and then we sent this instead which is just a big pile of nothingness in my opinion. So um Maybe I'm I'm biased in a negative way towards this one because I'm frustrated about it, but I really have never enjoyed this song. I don't think there's anything in it to enjoy. It's just a calm mood, a bit of a bouncy beat, but at the same time, it's just so uninteresting to me that uh, I'd rather not listen to it. Um, yeah, 2017, I can't go on. Solid pop tune again. <laughs> Where should I even put it? Um... Yeah, like the, the song doesn't really have that much going for it. I like the I like the distinct sound of the verses with the backing track. Uh, I think the vocal in the verses aren't really too great. It's very monotonous. It doesn't really have a lot of character. 
chorus is a bit memorable um, in just the melody. Um, but I think what really makes this one work is the production quality of it. The instrumental is quite strong. Uh, I especially love the uh, the sections after the chorus where the instrumental kind of gets to take over and it becomes like more focused on uh, choreography on stage. Uh, while the backing track also has like this small detailing that really works with vocal chops and whatnot. Uh, and choreography on stage is of course fantastic. I love the stage performance of this and I think that's what puts it up in this category. The song it's probably more in the solid category, but uh, I think the performance bumps it up uh, one spot here or one level. Dance You Off is not the case, uh, like the same case for that one. I don't like Dance You Off particularly much. I think it's kind of a, a like the production quality of it is obviously insane. Uh, it's very minimalistic, uh, which also kind of heavily relies on dynamics, which just really works. It's a distinct sounding song. It sounds crisp, clean. Um, Vocal performance is all right. Uh, I kind of like the contrastive tone of like the, the higher pitched voice with the very bass focused and deep, dark uh, instrumental. Kind of also works really well with the stage performance. I think that's that kind of warrants a solid, but at the same time, it's just not my type of song. And, uh, and yeah, I don't know. He kind of, uh, uh, I don't really like his stage presence all too much either, so. Um, there's that. But uh, solid enough. I don't really have any problem with it, I guess. Uh, something I definitely don't have a problem with is Too Late for Love. I think this, again, is like a perfect pop song. <laughs> I'm not sure how many times I'm going to say that. But uh, this one, I think, is really great. I think there's a, there is a flaw in the song, and that is the structure. Uh, it's very up and down, very choppy, not really a very cohesive piece of songwriting here. Uh, it just kind of kills the energy every time it moves into a new segment, which is a big, big shame because everything else about it I really like. Uh, the opening is fantastic. Uh, charismatic performer who sings it incredibly well. Um, and the chorus is just perfect. It has such a great melody and it's so well sung. And then the incorporation of the backing vocals from the Mamas, it's just perfect. So uh, I guess we'll even it out and put it in fantastic. Um, 2020 move, the Mamas came back without uh, Jon here, and uh, well, the song isn't really <laughs> what Too Late For Love is, in my opinion. I think this is quite uninteresting. The vocal performance definitely highlight, like elevates it. It's catchy, memorable, but not too interesting, so uh, I think it's a solid in this one. Uh, I would have really liked to see uh, Anna Bergendahl win in 2020. I think Kingdom Come is like a perfect country pop song with a brilliant performance and just such a drive in the song. I don't know why I'm talking about that song when I was supposed to talk about Move, but yeah, I am I really wanted that to win. Uh, and Move did, and Move is all right, but uh, it's not something that I really think is a standout in the Swedish Eurovision catalog at all. Uh, voices, I don't really think is one of those either. It's quite all right. I think it's a s fantastic production. I love the incorporation of like 808s and it's a like dark brewing synths, really fits the atmosphere well. It's a strong vocal performance, like the staging, like the lighting. I didn't like the lighting in Eurovision, uh, but in Melody Festival, I think the staging was perfect. Eurovision kind of just, eh, it wasn't the same and I, I didn't like it equally much, but still there's a nice color grading to it. Um, the song has a catchy hook, uh, it also has like this kind of anthem vibe to it, which just really works. So um, where to put it, I think really great is, is uh, fair, because we're going to end on a high note. Hold Me Closer, this is my favorite song from 2022, uh, and no one can uh, say that it's unjustified from me, because it's my opinion. Uh, this is a beautiful ballad. Uh, first time I heard it, I was blown away, honestly. It's just like this intimate opening leading into such an expansion throughout the song. The progression is fantastic. Um, loving the structure of it, loving the intimacy of it. It feels very close. It feels very, um, what do you call it, like uh, personal. Uh, you really get dragged into the storytelling of the song, li both lyrically, but the way that it works with the melodic writing is really what sets it apart, I think. Instrumentation is fantastic, love the glossy sound of the guitars, love the uh, intimacy of the opening with the piano. Um, 
and then like at the end when the drumming just kicks in and the distorted guitars kind of build this momentum to the song and the final chorus is just fantastic when everything comes like collective soundstage at the final chorus is just so overwhelming uh, and then the vocal performance is kind of just shouting out this more uh, desperate tone of vulnerability and of 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 desperation basically uh, it's a very very hard hitting moment for me i always get very emotionally touched by it um and it this song means an incredible amount to me and i have to put it in among the greatest because i think it is one of the best songs um in your vision of late that's for sure and that is my list from Sweden's entries in Eurovision. All 30 of them from 1993 to 2022. Uh, not sure how biased you think I am, uh, but uh, do tell me in the comments if you want to. Thank you so much for watching all of this video. Uh, the tier list for Switzerland will be up hopefully tomorrow. Uh, so maybe I'll see you in that one. Take care of yourselves. and. Uh...